today. Can we give a shout to Jesus? Amen. Thank you so much. You may take your seat for a moment. Hey, Daddy, precious to us. Your efforts are seen by us. And we are just saying thanks. Just saying thanks. Dear Daddy, precious to us. Your efforts are seen by us. And we are just saying thanks. Just say, Dear Daddy. Dear Daddy, precious to us. Your efforts are seen by us. And we are just saying thanks. Just say, Dear Daddy. Dear Daddy, precious to us. Your efforts are seen by us. And we are just saying thanks. We love you, we thank you, we really appreciate you, we love you, we thank you, we appreciate you, yeah, we love you, we thank you, we appreciate you. We see yeah, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you. I don't know what's the program these days. It's like, it's like anything is a program. So for all of our visitors, thanks again for accepting our invitation. Um, I want to teach you something that many people don't know and don't have in their life. Um, maybe if you can get it today, you will, you will be like me at some stage. Most people are in a hurry. Can you tell your neighbor, most people are in a hurry. And you might be part of the people who are in a hurry. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to help you because I used to be, I used to be a time freak. You know time freak? Yeah, I will come. I remember I used to drive. We are going on a holiday for five days or seven days, but I'll be driving 140, 160. And one day I ask myself, where am I going? Why the speed? What's the hurry? Let's start the holiday now. Let's drive slowly. Now, for the many, my little life, we never had theaters and whatever. Once in a while, we will have school theater. Some people will come and do drama at school. Personally, I enjoyed the drama. I will sit there and wonder, you know, my imaginations, how far people take me. And today, I think, is what I could share with you. All that has happened, fine, it has been done in my name. I'm grateful. Thank you so much for the songs and everything. But it has been done for you. Learn to enjoy your little life. Yes. Just sit down and listen. When you come to church, don't come to church with a 12 o'clock lunch time. You are not going to enjoy much. By privilege of being a pastor, I've spoken to people who are disappointed in life. And one person that I spoke to, or among the many people I spoke to, was their previous life. I asked them, when you went to the Shebin, was there a program And, and, and what he said to me was amazing. He said, I never even thought about it. I was lost. 
Most of the time when I left, I never knew I left. Do you understand? He was so drunk that he, seen, he didn't see the moment. But the funny part of it was that he was going there like every moment he gets a chance. He goes into his stupor to be drunk to a point of not knowing where he is. So what I'm saying to you is you have been ministered to. I know some of you might say, oh, the church is taking long. It's the spirit I used to have. I miss so much in life because every time I was in a hurry, one day I asked myself, what am I going to do when I get home? And I realized there wasn't really, there wasn't really much that makes me to want to go back. But because I was in church, there was a, an irritating demon that makes me not to want to stay in something very nice. The, the young woman, what's her name? Who, who said she gave 20 rand? Vinolia. Let me tell you something. My first experience using Vinolia as an example. Um, I prayed to God. My family, my parents were retrenched. Both my mom and dad were not working at the time. And there was nothing in the house. I prayed for bread. There are things that the Spirit will talk to you. It's not everybody else. And it's very good that she said she was putting on a short skirt. I wish they have taken a picture. We should look for that picture in the church. The, the short skirt plus a crop top. Now, you are too perfect to judge. But somebody was being led by the Spirit. When well, you might come and like some of you might be offended that they are singing with jeans. I mean, I mean, can you imagine? Look at them. They are singing jeans. No, no. It's because you have not suffered. You have no testimony. You don't know what people have gone through to be where they are. And therefore, you are missing the moment that you are supposed to celebrate. And then you will be waiting somewhere, thinking somebody will come. So, the young woman, she had she followed the inner voice. You know, today is Pentecost Sunday. I'll be preaching a bit about Pentecost. But maybe I don't need to preach. I think the Spirit have already preached. She heard. I mean, I was thinking about it. What is 20 rand? Doctor, what is 20 rand? What do you buy with 20 rand? But to her, it was dear. It was all she had. It was a transport money. I don't know you understand. What is not valuable to you? For some of us, going to church was all we had. Because our homes were turbulent. There was no peace. There was no joy at all. We just had to go home because everybody goes home at some stage. But we knew that he has sugar anytime. You understand? She had. She had what? The Spirit. That's what she told us. It's not us. She told us that the Holy Spirit said, give what? You're 20 rand. What can you do with 20 rand? Huh? Yeah, even a loaf of bread is 23. In that sense, I was shocked because I, I, I always buy bread in the, in the house. But I never look at the price. Because, you know, when you are always sent, you pick up whatever and then you go and pay. You just complain at the till that like, hey, it's too much. But I never look at the bread. This time, we went together. We were buying vegetables, just a few vegetables. And she said, bring bread. I went. I didn't pick up the bread. I, I came back. I said, come, come and see the price. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? So to you, to you, you are comfortable. You have not come to the level where you can hear the spirit. At her young age, if you can hear the spirit, I tell you, you'll go very far. All my jobs, all, all my jobs, my wife used to be very jealous. Uh, all my jobs, I got them by the spirit. Yes. A job that I didn't need, I will not go for the interview. And the job that I will go for the interview, when I come back, I'll say, it's my job. And it's just like that. I'll say, oh, I went for the interview. It is my job. The Holy Spirit spoke to me to take it. So, I'll take it. And since some instances I've said, no, I don't want the job, I'm fine. Uh, so, my challenge to you is 
Learn to sit down and enjoy. To do what? Yeah. Rest. And you'll be shocked how much God can do for you. Am I telling somebody? Hallelujah. So, thanks again for the celebration, the Honorable Doctor. Uh, it was nice. I, I was worried. We come from a funeral. Somebody passed on on Monday. Uh, maybe you know Kiyo. He used to be my worship team leader some years ago. And uh, Monday was the 13th. The 14th was my birthday. Uh, it was a struggle. And by yesterday we buried. So some of you might not even be aware that we buried him yesterday. But we are grateful for the life that God gave to us. Amen. So I'm saying to you, enjoy. Tell your neighbor, enjoy. enjoy. Hallelujah. Please do take your seat. Can we give a powerful clap of ring? <laughs> Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you are here this afternoon. Is it afternoon already? This afternoon. Of all the things that have happened, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. God, from the time you were born, had a plan for your life. God had a plan for your life. And part of the plan was that today you should be here. The Bible says he died on the cross that we may have life and we may have it abundantly. Even today God wanted you to have a foretaste of him. I want to pray together with you. You can make right with God. Your sins can be forgiven you can be a child of God. The Holy Spirit have already spoken and continue to speak in your life that today is the right day that you should make right with God. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The book of John 3.17 says, for God did not send his son to condemn the world but that through him the world might be saved. God had a plan for you that your life might be saved. He says come to me all you who are heavy laden. He says my yoke is easy. My burden is light. God has a plan he says not to harm you but to prosper you to establish you he says come as you are as we had the testimony of our sister she came as she was being intimidated by her dress she chose to come and it was the day of a miracle it was the day of a salvation it was the day of reconciliation today your life can be reconciled today you can come to Jesus. Today you can make right with God. So if you are here this morning, you say I want to receive Jesus. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. Just lift up your right hand and lift it high. God bless you. 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 I see hands are going up. I want to make right with God. What about God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to make up with God. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. What about you? What about you? I said all eyes closed. All heads bowed. I want to make right with God. I want my sins to be forgiven. God bless you. I see your hand. 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 There at the back, God bless you. I see you. Is there somebody else? I want to make right with God. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want this love. I want this celebration. I want this adoration to come upon my life. What a great joy that I be returned to the Father. That I may have fellowship with Him. That I may come to know Him. This is my last call. What about you? Jesus died that your life may be right. 
All of us have issues. And Christ understands. We can never make ourselves right. It is in His forgiveness that our life will be made right. I'm calling my last call. Is there somebody else? I don't want you to be left out. The Holy Spirit is talking to you to receive Him, to be a child of God. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? I want to receive Jesus. I want to make right. God bless you. Is there somebody else? God bless you. I see your hand there at the back. Is there somebody else? God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. We are going to pray. I'll ask the whole church to stand. As we stand, all those who lifted their hands, I want to pray for you personally. You come here. On the altar, ashes will help you. Don't be afraid. Can we stand as we give a powerful clap offering? Come, please. The answer of the world. Can we give a powerful tap offering as they come? Ashes, help them. Please, if you lifted your head, come. And even if you have not, you can look at me this way. Yes, Matoho, can we give a powerful tap offering? It's the answer of the world. him, there's no Matoho, please. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. My take to everybody is that I gave my life to Jesus. Interpreter. I gave my life as a young boy, as a child. Did I have struggles? Did I have adolescence? All those things were my problem. But God saved me. I went through it. Because Christ became the center of my life. He preserved my life as a young person. He's preserving my life. He's making me perfect. I'm not yet perfect. I still trip and fall. But the Bible says a righteous man every time he falls he rises again. I pray today as you have come forward you are the greatest gift to God. Jesus loves you. Jesus has a good plan for your life. He wants to show forth his mercy. And today we are in jubilation that you have joined our celebration and we say to God thank you Lord we say Ebenezer hallelujah as those who are here in front to lift up both of their hands is the only sign of surrender I'll ask the whole church to join us as well I'm going to lead in prayer I'll ask all those specifically here on the altar in front to join but I want the whole church to join us you can say Father say it again Father in the name of Jesus I thank you today for this great salvation Father today I come before you I recognize I am a sinner. I need a savior. Lord, forgive me all my sins. Cleanse me from all sin and unrighteousness. Make me your child. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Can you say my name is? Write this name, Vincent, in the Lamb's Book of Life. Make me your child. You say with my old mouth. I speak. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And with my own heart. I believe. That you raised him from the dead. Today. Come into my life. Be my Lord. And be my savior. Wash my sins. With your blood. Make me clean again. Every addiction upon my life is broken in the name of Jesus. I am free from every addiction in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Lead and guide me. Even now, 
in the name of Jesus. Can you say, Satan, today I cut ties with you. Take what is yours. I belong to Jesus. I am a child of God. I've chosen Jesus. I thank you, Father, for this grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Drop your hands, look at me. Thank you so much. It's a great, great blessing. Behind you, there are people with uh, smartphones or whatever. They are just going to pick up your name, telephone number. We will send you material and then we'll keep contact with you to help you to grow the same way as I grew myself. So I'll ask of you just to turn, you turn back. You are looking at me like this, you just turn like this. You'll find somebody behind you. Because we are quite a number this, this morning, I will, let's wait patiently as they take our... As others, pastors, you can assist. Can you give us the song, please? Take the names, please. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today, above him there's no other, Jesus is the way, Jesus, Jesus is the answer. Is the answer. Can we give a shout to Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for all the things that have been done. I think my, my work is done for the day. For your sake, so that you don't say I didn't go to mess. Uh, Sunday is what we call this Sunday. I'll take about 10 minutes for, this, for the sake of the learned. Yes, for the sake of the learned so that they say, I learned something. Jesus, Easter came. We are, this is what we talk about Pentecost. You have Easter. Easter Friday, Friday, Easter Friday, Christ dies. And then uh, he gets crucified. And then on on Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, we call it, we call it Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. From Resurrection Sunday, we have 40 days. Jesus appears to many people and ministers to them. And on the 40th day, Jesus 
God does all and he's taken to heaven. Then from, from, from what we call Ascension Day, there is 10 days we add. And then we have, we have what we call Pentecost. That's when the Holy Spirit comes. They had about 10 days of waiting in Jerusalem. So they wait in Jerusalem for the power of God that may, the grace of God may come. So I want to share with you, as I said, I'll take a short, possibly 10 minutes or so. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 12. Book chapter 1 verse 12. I think verse 1 and 2. Let's, let's start there. Verse 1 and 2. It says, The former account that made of Theophilus of all Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after through the Holy Spirit has given him commandment to the apostles of whom he has chosen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus showed himself to the apostles that he has chosen and we are told plus minus 500 people. When Jesus rose from the dead, there was a resurrection of the dead in a true sense. The graves were open. The righteous came out. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me. In Jerusalem. In Judea. In Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. Now today is our, it's our Pentecost Sunday. It's the day of salvation. Literally Pentecost gave us the the initiation of the harvest of the world. The Holy Spirit empowered every ordinary person to do extraordinary things. May the Holy Spirit empower you with power that you may do extraordinary things in the name of Jesus. Now the word Pentecost simply means 50. It means jubilee. It, it means to be released. May the Lord release you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you do great and mighty works in the name of Jesus. Amen. It means to be restituted, to, be, to go through restitution or the payment back. To be restored. When you have lost all, the Lord gives you everything. The example we're using of our sister when she said, the Holy Spirit said. You know, her testimony is surprising. Because it's one of many rejected NSFAS testimonies. May every rejection be put right in your life in the name of Jesus. You don't know what it is like to receive a yes. May you receive a yes from God. You know, when everybody else closes the door, the Lord opens it. Makes it impossible for people to to fight you. The day, today, it means the day of provision. Pentecost means provision. May the Lord provide for every need, emotional and material, in the name of Jesus. So when we talk about Pentecost, it's a feast. It's a place of celebration. May you enter into a feast of first fruits in the name of Jesus. You see, when, when, when the Holy Spirit comes upon our life, we start to be fruitful. I was thinking yesterday, we went to the funeral. As I gave an example, somebody passed on on Monday. Our beloved, our beloved MMK passed on, man, on Monday. I think it was a devastation for some of us. Even yesterday when we were doing the celebration, I was thinking about it. I said, they didn't even sing any single song. They didn't post any uh, recorded DVD, CDs. I mean, the, the celebration was short-lived. 
But I want you to understand that there is a there is a feast of your life. Many people never allow themselves. You know, today as the children are dancing, one, two people might become offended and say, What about Jesus? Listen, it, all, all is about Jesus. You are missing the, you are missing the point. I've, I've been among the most religious people. You, you will be shocked how we miss God in our perfection. Your life has become a feast others can feast on. Can you tell your neighbor, you must become a feast. Yes. When up in our Java to our Jew. You are always wanting people to spend on you, but you don't spend on I had a relative. Others. I had a relative who uh, said to my other relative. I I've, I've visited these relatives of mine. Coming from the township. I had some money for transport like the young girl. But I had some little cash like 5 rand or 10 rand. Extra, which we used to buy bread. And he said to my other relative. I said You can't finish a generous person. You can tell your neighbor, can you be nice once in your life? Tell your neighbor, can you be nice once in your life? Tell them, you are always serious, can you smile back, please? May you relax. Tell your neighbor, may you relax. You say, I'm watching you, you are too serious. Are you aware that the most people who are not content, who are not happy, are the people who have almost a lot of things? We had a friend, he's a, he's a pastor, we had a, a December conference. This conference will, will start Christmas Eve and finish on the 30th of December. He refused to come to the conference. Oh, I know the conference. Christmas. I don't have Christmas clothes. A husband, somebody's husband. Murut, Murut of all congregation, Murut. I don't have Christmas clothes. <laughs> When, when are you going to come to enjoy others? Pentecost is about enjoying others. Tell your neighbor, I'm a, I want to enjoy you. Stop being this serious. Hey, some people, they are bitter. Lemon is better. Yeah, lemon is better if they are there. You know, there are certain people, if they come home, oh, America oh, was America, yeah. When they come to your they are event, spoilers. They, are, they take your joy. May the Lord deliver from spoiling other people's uh, appetites in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To us, Pentecost is very important because it initiates the beginning of the harvest of souls of men. And it cements the purpose and the mission of the church. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no church. Acts 20, 28 says, uh, take heed to yourself and to the Holy Spirit. He says, can you put it there so that I don't misquote it. Acts 20, 28. Take heed to yourself and to the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you an overseer. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you tell your, your neighbor, the Holy Spirit is the senior pastor. Yeah, you, we can have church. If it's not there, there is no church. It's just a, a gathering. Mercy. Uh, the sequence of the supernatural. Pentecost initiates redemption. It brings salvation. 
Pentecost brings resurrection to us. The first fruit of eternal life. Ascension day is our position and relationship and our inheritance which is made complete in God. But the Bible tells us on the, the third feast which is the Pentecost. Bread is shared. Bread is shared. Given in anticipation of harvest. The example, the testimony of the young girl, she gave in anticipation of God's intervention. She gave anticipating. Do you anticipate anything? Hallelujah. Pentecost is your story. It's the beginning of your story. Can you tell your neighbor, Pentecost is the beginning of my story. Yeah, you must manifest. You, we must start to see the grace of God through your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, it must be your beginning. The beginning of all things. The Holy Spirit empowers us in the ministry. I'm not giving you verses. Let me give you verses. Number one, Pentecost is, a, is your story or is our story, our beginning. The book of John 14, verse 16 to 17. It says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. And then secondly, the Holy Spirit empowers us to do ministry, to serve, to lay down our life unto God. Then you can read Acts chapter 10 to 8. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. Tell your neighbor you are full of the Spirit. Do the good works of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Do what? The good works. I came to church some years ago. I was a young boy. I always came to church with a short. I only had school uniform as, uh, as my clothes. I had a gray, the gray flannel pen and then a short. Gray flannel, I kept it for Sunday. And then uh, every other meeting during the week, I'll put on my khaki my khaki short or the black in a school the school i went to we were using a black a black short and there was a man in the church with his wife who saw that this child has no clothes that's the fruit of the spirit when you don't see the needs of other people Accept your own needs. Do you understand? As a child, I remember when I went to church that Sunday. They didn't measure me, they didn't tell me, they didn't promise me. They just came with two pens of two, two long, long pens. And then two shirts. It's a fashion. But everything was. What they bought me was the fashion of my time. Sure. I felt like heaven. May you become a Pentecost to somebody. May you become a joy to somebody. May you be the one who's going to share the best of what you have. Hallelujah. May you see the pain of others beside your pain. You know, there are certain people... All of us have pain. If you come, we will tell you our pain. But let's go beyond our pain. Mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit empowers us in the ministry. The church is sent out to reach out and to preach and to do the great commission. The, the Holy Spirit has set the church in motion for the great commission. And the witness and the testimony of Jesus to the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we read it just now. Do something for God. Uh, the songs that they sang to us. The last one, Jesus is the answer. 
I, I said that some time ago. And the person said, what was the question? <laughs> you know, so I said, the question was sin. Men are dying of sin. How will they come out of their sin? How will they come out of their difficulty? How will they come out of death? Jesus is the answer. Amen. Imagine somebody. May the grace of God be with you. Amen. As I promised, I want to keep my time. The Holy Spirit is the true testimony of Christ. The book of Revelation tells us that the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of, test- of prophecy. Amen.